Have you ever wondered how investors pick winning stocks during earnings season? In today's video, I'll break down the key to successful investing during earnings season. So here we have a brand new article from Yahoo Finance titled, Here's the Secret to Investing Success This Earnings Season Morning Brief. This came out this morning around 6 a.m. Eastern. And let's dive right into it and see what this person thinks is the key to successful investing during earnings season. And then I'll give you my takeaways from all of this. So think of a company's culture first as the numbers roll in this earnings season. It may pay handsome dividends down the line. So he brings up this after stumbling upon a stunning stat on PepsiCo and prepping for the company's earnings last week. PepsiCo hasn't missed our analyst earnings estimates since 2009. So that's a crazy stat. And I think a lot of people obviously don't necessarily think about company culture when they think about investing. That's not the first thing they think about. So despite all the ups and downs economically and politically around the world in 14 years, PepsiCo has basically not let investors down financially. That definitely is extremely remarkable. And let's kind of figure out maybe why that happened. So, you know, he asked the CFO why that's the case. And he said, there's more going on at PepsiCo than simply winning each quarter because it sells tasty soda and snacks to the masses globally. Sure, they have a great portfolio of snacks and beverages, so it's a good sized category to start with. You know, their TAM, their total addressable market is definitely massive, right? Most people are consuming PepsiCo products. But in addition to that, I think we have a team and a culture here at PepsiCo just continuing to steadily grow with the categories. Growth in many ways is a real value inside of PepsiCo. We think all, we all think growth. You put that culture together and you get the stock chart you see, Johnson said. He also added, I think the best days are in front of us, not behind us. So clearly the CFO is pretty confident about Pepsi moving forward. Take that with a grain of salt, though, of course. None of this is going to be, you know, financial advice or investing advice. Obviously, do your own research and we'll get into that a little bit later and what I think about all this. So spotting whether a company has good culture is incredibly difficult. A company could have terrible culture and still put up amazing results, of course, if the demand for the product or service is robust. So you have to understand, sure, company culture can play a part into this, and it's good to do research on that. But at the same time, if the product has high demand, you know, and let's say there's a limited supply, you know, everything comes down to supply and demand. So you have to understand that when it comes to the stock market. On the other hand, good cultures don't always lend themselves to great results. Exactly. So you might be thinking, how am I going to spot in good culture driving good financial incomes? So I really think the starting point is pulling up a simple 10 year stock chart. If the line basically goes up and to the right, as is the case with PepsiCo, chances are the company is doing something right. From there, there's a lot more digging they have to do on job review sites, you know, LinkedIn Glassdoor, heavy dose of ingesting analyst research. You could also watch how executives interact with people at conferences. Um, but just pulling up the stock chart and seeing if it's going up into the right over 10 years, that's something that's super basic that anyone can do. And obviously that's going to point in the direction of that they're doing something right. So, you know, we could take a look at Apple's chart here. This is a 10 year chart on Apple. Obviously it's going up into the right. And Apple was a pretty easy, quote unquote, easy stock to pick out. You know, one of the safer tech stocks over long term. So clearly they have been doing something right for the past 10 years. So. Another thing that you have to keep in mind is that this guy obviously thinks a culture investigation should be a standard operating procedure when researching a company and deciding what to do with the stock. The stock market has run hard this year and the performances of many companies won't live up to elevated expectations. So you also have to keep that in mind. The stock market is up a ton since the beginning of this year and we're only a little bit more than halfway through. So what's expected to happen? Second quarter earnings for the S&P 500 are seen as dropping 7.2% year over year. That would be the third consecutive quarterly decline. Energy materials and healthcare are forecasted to show earnings decline of more than 20%. Sales are projected to decline slightly the first fall since the third quarter of 2020. Net profit margins are barely expected to grow from the first quarter. So I think people have gotten really excited from this big run up um, this year. And you know, I even made a video about the winning, winning streak of the NASDAQ and that it typically, you know, after that, the market does continue to run up, but that's just based off of previous data. We don't really know what's going to happen, especially exactly what this guy talks about is not all companies are winning in a climate of meh economic growth. There's a bunch of currency volatility and inflation that still doesn't resemble the CPI deceleration celebrated last week. So it's just more things to keep in mind and understand that 
every company is not a winner, right? We're reminded of this in earnings from JP Morgan, Wells Fargo, and Citigroup. They had mixed performances at best. So what companies do win in this environment? Culture champions in a mold of PepsiCo and even a Delta has displayed a remarkably consistent execution under CEO Ed Bashan. The losers? Everyone else. So I think the moral of the story here is that looking into company culture can give you insight into how the company wants to grow and can be a key indicator to look at that many people don't really think about when investing. Obviously, you want to be able to read their financials and understand how that all works. But, you know, looking at company culture is going to give you an idea of where the company is going moving forward. If we just, like I said, take a look at the 10 year chart here, we can see that Apple's doing something right. And we need to understand that we've had a big run up since the beginning of this year. I mean, so a lot of tech stocks are up literally 100%. And these are already crowded trades, right? Just like Apple, you know, everyone and their mother is an Apple. So you have to understand that you can't always pick individual stocks perfectly. And picking individual, individual stocks is actually extremely tricky. So when people first start getting into investing, um, obviously not financial advice, but typically what I do recommend is that you don't dive deep into doing a ton of research on, let's say, company culture. Like company culture could be important, but also there's things that are a lot more important, in my opinion. Like the guy said in this article as well, to have a good product with demand or a good service, they're going to do well regardless of company culture. But all the best companies moving forward are trying to keep their company culture um, really forward moving, and they want to keep everyone happy and have that growth mindset. But what I recommend you do is just take a look at, you know, instead of trying to go and research individual stocks and build your own portfolio, which is definitely fun to do, and you can outperform the market. But what you can do is just buy the ETF, right? Buy the NASDAQ. You can make a whole separate video on what exactly NASDAQ is, but I've talked about it a ton. It's really the top 100 plus stocks, um, all large cap American, more focused on tech, right? So this way you get a big basket of stocks and it's still going to do well. Sure, some individual stocks might outperform it, but a lot of individual individual stocks are going to underperform the NASDAQ as well. And you might have a ton of losers in your portfolio that are actually holding it down when you could have just bought the ETF, right? You could have just bought S&P 500, which is ticker SPY, or you could have just bought the NASDAQ and still got a really handsome return. And this way, you're also not subject to insane volatility, right? Earnings is a huge toss up. You have to understand when that when earnings come out, if they beat, you know, estimates typically the stock might go up a ton, but there's also other outside factors that play into that and vice versa. Stock could drop a lot. And this happens instantly, right? Usually after market close and there's not much you can do about it. So another moral of the story would be don't really focus on earnings too much. Think long term. Where is this company going to be in 10 years? And if you have that growth mindset and think, hey, they're going to be doing well in 10 years, then that's something that you can keep in your portfolio. But here you won't have to deal with that insane volatility. Obviously, this chart still has a lot of tech stocks in it. So the volatility has been pretty big, especially recently, right? With this big dip that happened here in 2022. And then now this big run up again, almost back at all time highs, which is pretty crazy to think about. But when you're first getting started in investing, there's a lot of outside factors that might make you scared of investing. Or you might think that, oh, you know, the stock's down 5%. You see that you see the number on the screen basically go down. I remember I had the same experience when I first started investing as well. So being in something that's quote unquote safer and less volatile, like an ETF, keeps, you know, your peace of mind. You know, it's a big mental game when it comes to investing too. And you can't like panic sell, you can't panic buy. And so this way you keep stay level headed and you understand that you have a good portfolio and a mixed basket of stocks that have typically done well in the past, as you can see, gone straight up into the right here over 10 years. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you got any value out of this video, make sure to like, comment and subscribe for more. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks.